Hello everyone! In today's video presentation, we will continue with our discussion about four system. In particular, discussion will focus on the determination of the resultant of force system in space. On the later part of this video, a sample problem is prepared for you to be guided on how to compute the magnitude and direction of the resultant of force system in space. A solution is strategized using a tabulated form of computation to facilitate discussion. Let us imagine that we have a system of force in space lying on a space represented by the three mutually perpendicular axes x, y, and z axis whose x, y plane, x, z plane, and y, z plane are separate, separated by different colors. And on this plane, there lies a concurrent forces having f sub 1 as the magnitude and whose direction is indicated by the angle that this is making with respect to the three mutually perpendicular axis as theta sub x sub 1, theta sub y sub 1, and theta sub z sub 1. Another force having a magnitude of f sub 2 is directed in this direction and whose direction is indicated by the direction that it is making with respect to the positive x, y, and z axis as theta sub x sub 2, theta sub y sub 2, and theta sub z sub 2. Here we wanted to compute for the magnitude and direction of the resultant of this concurrent force system in space. According to the concept, the resultant of the concurrent force system in space can be computed using the formula the square root of rx squared plus ry squared plus rz squared, where rx is the summation of force along x-axis, r sub y is the summation of force along y-axis, and r sub z is the summation of force along z-axis. The direction of the resultant can be computed or can be expressed in terms of the angle that this resultant will be making with respect to the three mutually perpendicular axes also. These are theta sub x, theta sub y, and theta sub z, and whose value can be computed using the formula. For theta sub x, theta sub x is equal to r cosine of r sub x over r. For theta sub y, it is computed as r cosine of theta sub r sub y over r and for theta sub z it is r cosine of r sub z over r. For this resultant to be properly understood, let us have some this example or sample problem. Find the resultant of the concurrent force system shown in the figure which consists of t equal to 300 pounds, P equal to 200 pounds, and F equal to 500 pounds, directed from D towards A, B, C, respectively. So let us have the illustration. I have here the X, Y, Z space, and from here, let us try to indicate the position of the points A, B, C, D, as well as the directions of the force T, the force F, and the force P. Here is our point D, whose position is indicated. We have here point A, the directions, the positions of which uh, this represents the direction of the force T, having a magnitude of K300. There is point B, and whose position is indicated, and a force P is directed from D to B, whose magnitude is 200. Similarly, there is force F, directed from D to C, as indicated in this figure. Now let us have our solution here. 
the first that we should be doing is to find for the coordinates of the given point. From the figure, we can define that point D will be at the coordinates 5, 10, and 0. Point A shall be at the coordinate 10, 0, 0. Point B is at coordinate 0, 0, and negative 3. While point Z will be at the coordinate 0, 2, and 4. Using the tabulated form of computation, the resultant can be computed by filling up this form which I have prepared and for easy computation of the resultant. As you would see in the table, you have here the following okay, data, the following column. The first column is for the magnitude of the force. The second column is for the magnitude of the component of the distance from which the force is directed. Then we have here the column for the distance D between the points where the force is directed. And then for the next three columns, you have X, Y, Fs, F, X, F, Y, and Fc represents the magnitude of the force in the X, in the Y, and in the Z direction. What we will just need do is to fill up this table with the data coming from the problem. Say, for example, let's start with the force T. Force T has a magnitude of 300 and directed from D to A. So that the component of the distance from which T is directed, which is D to A, shall be the difference between the coordinate of point A and the coordinate of point D. Hence, the value of X shall be equal to 10 minus 5, which is equal to 5. The value of y will be equal to 0 minus 10, which is equal to negative 10. While the value of z will be 0 minus 0, and that is equal to 0. From these components, we cannot compute for the value of d, given the formula that d is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared plus c squared, meaning square root of y plus square root of 10 plus square root of 0, taking the square root of that, give us the value of D, and that value is equal to 11.9. After computing for the distance D, we can now compute for the magnitudes of Fx, Fy, and Fz, representing the components of force D in the X, in the Y, and in the Z direction. And that is using the concept that the component of the force is proportional to the component of the distance from which the force is directed. Hence, Fx can be computed as the magnitude or the ratio of F multiplied by X divided by 11.19 and that gives you this magnitude of 134. Doing the same, we can compute for the value of Fy equal to negative 268 and Fz at 0. So for the second force, we have force of P having a magnitude of 200. P is directed from D to B, and therefore we can compute for the value of X, Y, and Z as the difference between this coordinate and that coordinate, and that is 0 minus 5 give us negative 5, 0 minus 10 give us negative 10, and negative 3 minus 0 gives us 0. This component will give us a distance between D to B equal to a magnitude of 11.57. Again, after computing for this distance between the point D to B from which P is directed, we can compute for its magnitude by multiplying this with negative 5 and then dividing it with 11.7 give us F sub X and whose value is negative 86.4. Similarly, multiplying 200 by negative 10, then dividing the product by 11.67, give us a value of negative 173. Then next, multiplying 200 by negative 3, dividing it by 11.57, give us a value of 51.59. Doing the same for the other force for F, F can be computed to have a distance 
equal to 10.5 and a component equal to negative 244, negative 390, and 195 respectively. Now after computing for the magnitude of the components of the individual forces expressed in terms of Fx, Fy, and Fz, then we apply the formula that the resultant is the summation of all the forces along x, along y, and along z. I'd like you to look at this. If you will sum up all this column, this gives us the summation of all the forces along x, and that gives us negative 196.4. Looking at this, you will see that the summation of this force, this column, give us r sub y, and whose value will be at negative 831. And then this column gives us a summation representing R sub Z and that value is up equal to 143.1. Now solving for the resultant, the resultant can be taken as the square root of Rx squared plus Ry squared plus Rz squared substituting the values. Therefore, we will have R equal to 865. Now, to get the direction of that R, the direction of that R can be computed in terms of the angle that that R will be making with respect to the X, the Y, and the Z axis so that theta sub X will be equal to R cosine of R sub X over R. Substituting the value gives us a value of 103.12. For theta sub Y, that is equal to R cosine of R sub Y over R, and substituting the value will have 169. And then for theta sub z, that is equal to r cosine of r sub z over r. And then substituting the value, we have 80.48 degrees. To be able to understand how r should be directed, let us draw it from our illustration. You shall see this as the direction of our r. r will be directed in this manner so that this angle. 103.12 shall be the angle that this R shall be making with respect to this axis. Whereas this 169, 50.9 shall be the angle that this R shall be making with respect to this axis. From here up to this position. While this 80.48 shall be the, the angle that this is making with respect to this axis. From here up to this position. I hope that with a short presentation that I have prepared for you, you are able to understand the process of computing the resultant of force system in space. If you have questions about the topic, you may subscribe to this channel and post your comments so that I can answer your questions in my next video presentation. Once again, thank you for, your, for watching.